baby. It's just B. <laughs> That's just that. Ain't no more to say. Jocelyn and Ballistic pull up, right? Jocelyn bounce out the car looking good, honey. Looking good. I mean, the braids, the dress, the accessories. She was really looking good. The body girl. You didn't got your little girl. I couldn't personally pull off the outfit, but it looked good on her, and I ain't gonna hate on sis, okay? Her and Ballistic make a really, really cute couple. Um, They've been together for two years. They set on and off. You know how that be, but hey, sis, they there. They say two years, we gonna go with two years, okay? Um, Jocelyn says either you gonna put a ring on this thing or I'm going to find the next best thing. And Ballistic is pretty much like, you ain't about to make me marry you. You're not gonna tell me when I'm gonna marry you. Like, that's a decision that I have to make. Like, hold on, you know? And so, Jocelyn says that their problems are commitment. Ballistic is scared to commit to her. And that's how she feels. And Ballistic is like, well, I feel like <laughs> the problems are communication, control, and anger. He had three. I don't know, sis. <laughs> but we gonna see how this plays out. <laughs> so they're all sitting in a group setting and Ballistic starts to say, Jocelyn told him, don't be mad if you come here and another woman is giving me that Becky. And <laughs> Jocelyn was like, well, yeah, I said that because you ain't giving me enough, you know, <clears throat> we're not doing it enough. And... He was like, all right, well, don't be mad if I punish her. P was it punish? Yeah, punish her. <laughs> and everyone was like, what the hell is punish? And he was like, you know, punish her. And Styles P, he magically put it together. And he was like, wait, punish and finish? And he was like, yeah. He was like, oh, oh, I got that shit. I got that shit. And then the confessional was like, niggas will say anything, bro. Like, <laughs> niggas will put any words together, bro. Like, <laughs> I think, to me, this showed a sign of control. Jocelyn wants to control everything. I think that he hit his three on the nail. And I think that that's probably what we're going to see throughout this season. But, sir, who, who did you think you were getting? Like, who... Like, I mean, I guess you can't judge nobody off TV, but still, you can't turn certain people into housewives. So fast forward to the Hip Hop Awards. Jocelyn and Ballistic actually won Ride or Die Award, which I thought was cute. Jocelyn got up on that stage, honey, and said, yeah, I'm riding and he dying if he ain't trying to <laughs> pretty much marry me. She was like, I'm tired of him being up here, playing house, taking my daughter to school every morning, you know. And he basically adopted her when she was one year old. And Ballistic is like, listen, <laughs> you ain't about to put no deadlines on this. You're not. You're not going to be the one to dictate when I marry you. So just like tell So Jocelyn Toller asked Ballistic, what do you want? What do you want, Ballistic? And he said, I want a respectful woman. I want a woman who gonna treat me like a king, how I treat her like a queen. And Jocelyn said, He ain't no king. He ain't no king. <laughs> and I was like, ma'am. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right. So, uh, Jocelyn, girl. All right. Anyways, Ballistic said that he makes sure every day her and her baby girl is good. And Jocelyn said 
That's the least he could do. And he was like, no, that's the most I can do. And all the other dudes and stuff was like Stu and uh, Bianca and her dude. They stood up. They're all clapping and stuff. People are all clapping. Jocelyn hella mad. She flipping everybody off. Hella mad. Dr. Ish says, he's trying to show you that he could be your king, but you keep shutting him down. And Judge Lynn Toller says, it will be a shame if the only thing getting in your way was you. Get off my stage. And Jocelyn proceeded to lick or pretend to lick on the microphone. And the look on Ballistic's face let me know why they're still together. I'm going to insert that picture right about now. <laughs> so Jocelyn and Ballistic get to their room. They got the ride or die room, of course. They get in their room. It's three beds. It's giving me all type of Drew and Tiffany vibes from last season. But um, they have a beautiful honeymoon side, which got the rose petals all on the bed into a heart. Save the date cards, wedding cake toppers, really cute. Then the other side, got some caution tape, say friend zone, two twin size beds. And he looking at that twin size bed and that friend zone like, hmm. And Jocelyn like, yes, hunty. Yes, that's where you're going to be. That's what we're gonna be. <laughs> and so Jocelyn tell him she gonna an ultimatum right there in the bedroom. She like, listen, you we gonna leave here with you marrying me. Or we just not gonna be together. And he said, No. She said, No what? He said, No, it don't work like that. And if you do that, I won't respect you. And then they started arguing and then that's the end of them. Okay, I don't have time. They arguing about the same thing. Let's see if it's gonna get deeper. You know, I love when they bring the little kids on the show and they do that type of episode. And I also would love to see what they lie detector question gonna be. What ballistic question gonna be to Jocelyn? What Jocelyn's gonna be to him? And who gonna be telling the motherfuckers the truth? Like, cause at this point, I really don't know who to believe. Like, I really want to say. Jocelyn, girl, you tripping, blah, 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 but I don't know, you know, two-piece Stevie J on TV, I'm just unclear on why he think that she just gonna be Betty Crocker with a sexy stripper body, I don't understand, I'm confused, but, you know, uh, we gonna see how this season play out with them, um, like I said, we gonna, uh, see... Um, Jocelyn get the news about Stevie getting custody of Bonnie Bella. I kind of think it's a little weird that Ballistic is taking your child to school every morning. Why are you not taking your... You didn't say we. You said he. <laughs> he takes your child to school every morning. Why? <sighs> All right, so you know, like I'm, like I said, I'm really excited. I actually really think that they're a really cute couple. I like his energy, though. You know, he can be very silent killer, but I'm really just trying to be a family man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I mean, we'll see. I want Jocelyn to to grow and get past this this fighting and this ignorant bullshit that she got going on, Miss Superstar Girl. Let it go. Next couple to pull up is Styles P and Audrey. Um, They pull up, first of all, I gotta say, sis is gorgeous. Sis is gorgeous. Sis is gorgeous. Yes, mama. Yes, mama. That's all I can say. You looking beautiful. Um, okay, so we get there. They get there and they say, hey. Actually, well, she says, hey. It's boring. It's no romance. It's no nothing. And Styles P is over there looking shocked. And it's like, you know if you've been romantic or not. Don't sit here and act like you shocked or, oh, that you realize your relationship is unlit. You know you ain't been doing that thing. Keep it real. So they get in there and um, uh, Styles P see Ballistic and him and Ballistic have worked together before. So he said that he liked Ballistic energy. It was cool. And Adwell seems to love her some... Uh, 
um, Jocelyn because she was like, hey, come here. And she was giving one of these like, yeah, girl, because I'm coming to hug you, hugs. Like, <laughs> you know from a distance I'm coming to hug you. Like, I already got my hands up as I'm coming to you. <laughs> so, Adjul and Styles P have been together for 24 years is what they told Jocelyn and Ballistic. And the next thing I just look up and I just see Styles P got sweat all under his underarms and it's like bruh bruh is you nervous like what is going on like why you got so much sweat under your arms like i know i'm not the only one who caught that asked why are y'all here y'all been together the longest out of everybody like no like why y'all here and that's when styles p revealed that um his and ajo's daughter died um, from suicide about four years ago and I did a little bit of research and I found out that it was Agile's daughter um, I think maybe that's why he may not be I don't know if that's why he's not as sensitive because he said he know he should be more sensitive and he's not and the frustration level is there so guys like I'm really like first of all I just want to you know send my condolences to them you know that's hard to lose your daughter into suicide you know and then I just want to say, I'm rooting for them. You know, it just seemed like I just want them to get whatever little tools they need so that they can get back on track. I really like them as a couple. Styles P and Agile got the Unlit Award. First of all, Styles P knew. He said, I think this go to us, girl. Right. <laughs> and they were like, Styles P and Agile. And he was like, I knew it. I knew it. And it's just like, that's because your ass ain't being romantic. <laughs> Agile said, listen, it's unlit. And I don't even know if we can get it back. And, you know, she says she talks to her sometimes. Actually, he says sometimes he talks to her like he forgets that she his wife. Oh, man, y'all. One thing that, like, struck me when she was like, he cheated, and if he cheated again, she would leave. And I think, like, I guess it was a little shocking to see them be together for 24 years, and then he cheated only one time. And if he did it twice, she was going to leave. It's like, wow, okay. That's what's up. Like, I feel like that's knowing your worth. Like, some people was like, oh, just one time? Like, two times? That's it? Y'all been married for 24 years? Da, 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 da. And it's like, no. Like, I'm so for it. Like, you don't tell a man you might give him a pass. But she gave him one. Even though it did damage. He got a pass. They're still together right now. And it's like, but I'm not going to let it happen two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight thousand times. First of all, you don't know how many times it happened before that one. That's just one that you found out about. It's kind of like tickets, like speeding tickets or traffic tickets when they be like, for every ticket you got, you could have got like four or five before that or something like that. Some stupid <laughs> like comparisons whatever but I'm just saying like she only found out about one and he could have did a lot 24 years is a long time to be together like no and that's a lot of time and I feel like a, like some of that was really in his prime you know what I'm saying so that if Styles could not figure out a way to be present then she don't know where this is going to go or where this is going to be because her patience is running thin. And I think with her losing her daughter, like, I think it's made her put life in a different perspective and things that may have been okay. You know, she's really putting her foot down. I think that was just, like, really a wake-up call. Like, also, too, like, life is too short, you know, to be dealing with mess. And also, I would feel like if it was me personally and I lost a child, I probably could feel like I could be by myself for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Until I work out how I truly feel. Like, and I feel like Ajul might be there too. Like, you know, and I said a promise to myself. I was like, listen, I'm not dating any more guys like Styles P, CeeLo, or Choses. Is they're mostly not there. They're not present. Um, like I said, CeeLo gives me very covert narcissist vibes. And Chose this has no, like, personality or nothing. Like, Bianca being a confessional is just talking. 
being live, laughing, smiling, and Chelsea is just, yeah, oh my god, and blah, blah, blah. Or he gives a smile, but his eyes still look dead. Like, he seems very emotionally unavailable, and that's why he's not giving Bianca anything that she emotionally needs, and she's feel like she's going crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if his ass was nice, but you know what I'm saying? That can't call everybody one. Then with Styles P, it's like, okay, you have some emotion. I feel it. I love it. But you do come off very emotionally unavailable, too. But then again, they lost a daughter. So it's like, if anybody going to get a little bit of a pass, it would be Styles P. But Chosen and CeeLo, mm. Styles P and Aljo get to their room, and it's really dark. All the walls are, like, really dark gray. They have really dark, blacked-out curtains that look like they're burned halfway at the bottom. They have a dining set. Um, with flowers and napkins and plates and candles and everything is just half burnt. Everything's half burnt. The room feels very depressing. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's very telling of where they are right now. Because even when, um, I ju or even when Styles P confessed about their daughter dying, um, Ajil literally finished her whole glass of wine. She literally sat there and drank the whole entire glass of wine. Like, I can just tell they're still, like, you know, I think they're still in low-key a dark place, you know, and they're, they're trying to find answers, and I'm, I'm so rooting for them. Pulling up next was Bianca and Chosis. Um, he said they've been together for 10 months, she says one year. I guess we'll go with a year. Um, the only thing I could think of as they were pulling up was, oh, Lord, I would hate to be that damn driver. I would hate to be their driver. I really would. Like, you could tell they are the couple that got in that car and argued from the time that they got in to the time they got out. Because Bianca bounced out the car looking mad, but cute. But mad, but cute. And uh, Chelsea said they argue every single day. And he's just not going to keep doing it. But something tells me he gives me very um, Michael love after lockup tease. But, you know, we'll talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> so they're sitting in a group and, you know, Bianca end up um, explaining to us in the confessionals that, you know, she believes in black love. And she told Chosis that one of her insecurities and fears was that he would leave her and move on to a white woman because that has been, you know, a pattern for some black men to come up with a black woman and then when you feel like you made it, you're going to go ahead to a white woman. So I guess when they broke up or took a break, as she would like to call it, Chosis went and ran right to the nearest white woman he could find. And um, she felt some type of way about that. So I can obviously see that they have some deep-rooted issues that are not dealt with and you can tell by their actions throughout the rest of the show. Oh well, yeah, so I had to get comfortable. Okay, but anyways. So, the first award goes to Bianca and Chosis. They won uh, most turned up or most turned. Um, Bianca wasn't taking any accountability for anything that she did. Like, she was like, oh, he does stuff to make me act up. The female shouldn't say stuff to make me want to come to their house. So, it was just everybody else's fault. Except for Bianca. And Dr. Ish asked her a drop the mic question. Which was, where did you learn that this is how you keep a man? I was like, damn. But what's the answer to that question? She never answered it. And then he also asked her, how much longer do you think that he's going to allow you to keep putting hands on him? And she was like, no, I don't really put hands on him. And... Girl, Dr. Ish wasn't buying it, and so he was like, well, I got a special friend to come out. And she was like, not to judge, not to judge. Who please, not to judge. And who came out? Judge Lynn Toller, honey. Came out with her smooth pimp walk in that pimp suit. Yes, Judge, I see you, boo. Yes, Judge came out. Oh, I just love her in that short haircut. Judge came out looking like a Valentine's Day surprise on that stage, baby. Just graciously just pimp walking in them heels. I'm telling you. So she got on that stage and she told everybody like, hey, listen, I am just here to be the outsider looking in so I can give y'all the insight on what you don't see. You know? 
So Judge asked her, are you happy? Like, are you happy? And she was like, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And it's just like now to fast forward and see her pregnant. It's like, I really hope they got some tools from this show. Because that's what just happens too often or not. Like, people don't even have their relationship together. No type of way. Have so many problems and then bring a child into a situation. And it's just a child suffers, you know. And then it continues the damn cycle. So I am really rooting for them now that I know that she's pregnant. And, um, you know, they should probably have a really, really cute baby. So Judge Lentola said, if I could give you anything, that would just give you the knowledge to know that you can have peace despite his behavior. You know, like... Do not allow your mind to be controlled by his actions and his behavior. And I was like, dang. And then she started crying. Then I was getting here. My eyes was watering. And because I just seen the hurt little girl in her. I seen the hurt little girl in her. And he ain't nothing but a little boy too. And this is just like a really young relationship. And they're just trying to figure it out. It was just like so cute. And I was just like over there like, oh, I can't cry. I got to do my video after this. I don't want to touch up my makeup. But, um... <laughs> But yeah, I thought that that was really cute, and he hugged her and stuff. But what got me was when she said, I just want him to love me as much as I love him. And then he, they were like, tell her that. I mean, tell him that. And she told him that. And I was just like, sis, you cannot make any man love you more by anything that you do. Like, either he gonna love you or he not gonna love you. Like... Either it is or it isn't, you know, and if you have to wish that, then that's more so telling about what it is, you know. She was like, I see the potential. I just want it to get better. And I always say, like, the beginning should be the best part. Like, the beginning should be good, right? So when I meet a guy and, like, if the beginning is already, like, really rocky, kind of stressful, I'm feeling some type of weird vibes, I let it go because... That should be the good time. Y'all over here fighting and doing all this other stuff. And it's just like, is it worth this, sis? Bianca just sitting by the pool looking cute, minding her own business. And then here come Choses. He want to play around. He want to push her in the pool. So they over there tussling. And here comes Stu out of nowhere talking about, you guys know you're really trying to make it work when you come in here with matching hair. Yeah. And Bianca started cracking up. Like, Stu, Stu was toasted. Stu was well, belong, well beyond toasted by then. Like, Stu was toasted, okay? And so, uh, Chosis pushes uh, Bianca in the pool. She pulls him in the pool. They both wet. They arguing. And meanwhile, Jocelyn and the confessions talk about, Why y'all hoes over there skinny dipping? Okay? You need to be over here mingling. Okay? Mingling. <laughs> And so, eventually, they did. They came over there, and she had her little towel, and they was like, let's go inside, everybody. But then the conversation got creepy because Styles P and CeeLo just took it to all type of levels that we could have just did without. So, the next thing we see is Bianca and Chosen's going to their room, and their room was turned up. That was the theme of their room. And they opened the door, and it was nothing else and no other else than... A freaking boxing ring. And you know what they did? They took the props and gear, put it on, and started fighting. Um, Stu says that Michelle is always trying to pawn him off on other women. And Michelle is saying that Stu is unattentive, unromantic, just un-everything. And Stu is like, well, I was doing all that stuff, and then you had a problem with it, and Michelle shut him down. Honey, there was no more talking for Stu. Like, Stu definitely knows his role. Like, that's crazy. Like, Stu fall in line with it, though. Like, he low-key okay with it. Like, I peeped out that Stu was looking at Jocelyn. And if you've seen in the previews, Michelle busts Stu out and says... Um, to Ballistic and Jocelyn that Stu said that Jocelyn is the most beautiful woman he didn't ever seen. So, and you see Ballistic say, hey Stu, 
I'm gonna have to talk to you later, bro. <laughs> so the judge is coming on the stage and everybody clapping. And look at Stu. I think Stu is looking at Jocelyn. You got to be careful with these people who wear these shades now, especially the ones where you can't see their eyes. And I think Michelle A know that Stu be eyeing other women, and I think that that's where that fear come from. And I know he was kind of tipsy because Stu was drinking a lot. But still, he was over there and he was trying to side-eye Jocelyn with his little nasty uh, Michelle is just not peeping none of it. And it's like, I don't think Stu do be looking at other women. I don't think Michelle is just crazy. I don't think she's just making this stuff up. I think she done seen some stuff and he not making her feel secure about it because he's still doing stuff. I don't know about Stu either. Like, Next award is the FOMO award, which is fear of missing out. And it goes to our favorite couple. Michelle and Stu. I just want to say like a side note, like when I was doing the videos, to, when I was looking for the pictures of the couples to insert into my video, I could find um, a fair amount of pictures of Jocelyn Ballistic. I could find a fair amount of pictures of Chozis and um, Bianca. I could find a fair amount of pictures of CeeLo and Shani. I could find a whole bunch of pictures of Styles P and Adriel. I really could not find, other than one picture, which was already inserted on the show, of Michelle A in stool. Like, I don't know, like, if somebody followed her on Instagram or something, y'all seen pictures of Because I could not, honey, doing Google and trying to uh, uh, put their image in and try to figure out where, I could not find... <laughs> no Michelle A and no Stu. So I did see in the previews that I think it was Dr. Ish. He said that um, one of the couples here is not a real couple. And I believe it's Michelle A and Stu. I did love the judge message to Stu. And she was like, listen, when you pick a woman, you pick all of a woman. You know what I mean? Like, you don't get to pick and choose what part of her you want. You, you got to take the whole package. And my whole thing is, like I said, and if you know that your female has shown you signs of feeling like you know, you're looking at women, like, what are you doing to offset that? Like, what are you doing? Because, like, Stu comes off as a big-ass goofball to me. Like, I was just, Stu was irritating me. Like, the whole time the judge was trying to get her message across to Michelle A, he got the microphone award, he holding it to the judge's mouth and stuff. The judge was like, I got this, lean back, bro. Like, you doing way too much. And even when she said, Stu, now let me get to you, he act like he was fixing his tie. Like, you seem mad irritating, and I ain't gonna lie. I feel like what the real could have been is he, her little buddy, you know what I'm saying, her little buddy. <laughs> and, you know, the show was an opportunity to make some money, and she figured, okay, well, I may have been dealing with you for X amount of time. We might as well go in here and get this check or whatever. But I don't think that they ever actually spent time together like at all <laughs> dr ish feels like because of michelle's troubled romantic past with her baby fathers that may be more of the reason of the problem of her not trusting Stu versus anything that Stu actually really did maybe maybe not because if it's not real then you know boom but if it is real and they did have a, I don't see love. I see, I see tolerance. I see tolerance. I don't see love. I don't see love at all. So ultimately what Michelle A and Stu's issue comes down to trust. And I, I definitely get what Michelle A is saying, like, but it's like ultimately like Michelle A kind of playing games with it because if this scenario is real, right, and you feel like, okay, maybe this young boy, he younger than me and maybe, you know, he is still looking at other women and, oh, you don't feel like he love you. And then, sis, do you love him? Like, why y'all together? Like, do you feel like you could find better? Why are y'all together? Like, why are you pushing him away? She's pushing him away like she don't want him. <laughs> like, it, their situation just don't make no sense to me. It, it don't. It's like, part of me kind of understand where Michelle is coming from. But then the other part of me is looking like, is this real? Like, is their relationship real? Like, Stu just keep talking about, Michelle A pushed me away. Michelle A pushed me away. But what are you doing to get closer to her? And Stu get to their room. And it is a whole bunch of pictures of 
what Michelle feels is beautiful women. And <clears throat> it's a few pictures of her, but it's look like a lot of Instagram girls, a lot of just models, it looks like, honestly, like really skinny, light-skinned models um, all over his wall, or her and his wall with like a double bed. And Michelle is like, oh, these are all the women you like. You like all the beautiful women. Oh, let me stop. I'm really bad at Michelle's voice. <laughs> And Stu was like, this is like, you know, uh, the type of women that Chef Stu could get. Girl, I don't know how Michelle gonna get through these 10 days with Stu. I don't know how I'm gonna get through these 10 days with Stu. Stu is too much. Like, Michelle says she don't have any more lives here to keep messing up. And then Dr. Ish says, do you get that, Stu? And she said, like, no, he thinks it's all about beauty. And it's just like, I get it, but it's like her repeating like, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time, I don't have time to get my, my time played with, I don't got time, I don't got time. No, it, like I said, literally, it comes down to trust issues. You don't trust this man, but if you don't trust this man, why are you with this man? Why? Like, I, I'm sorry, like, that's why I'm single today, like... If I don't trust you, I can't be with you. I'm not about to waste your time. She's wasting time by being with someone who she feel like is wasting her time. <laughs> like, period. Like, is it about him liking you and loving you? Or is it about who you love and who you like? Like, because I don't see the love in her eye for Stu. I see toleration. Like, he look like he irritates the hell out of Michelle. So Stu got toasted as we all seen, and started throwing up by the end of the night. It just made me feel like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just feeling like, is he there for just a good time, you know? And that's why he's just drinking up the liquor. I swear to God, I just don't think that they're a real couple. I just don't. I don't think that they're a real couple. So next up are CeeLo and Shiny. They kill me with their little intro, y'all. First of all, I am just, like, laughing out loud, low-key. How Stu is sitting here talking about Bianca and Chosen's matching hair. I know y'all seen the matching outfits. Okay? <laughs> I know y'all seen the matching outfits. But they little quote took me out what he said i'm CeeLo green i'm from another planet and she was like i'm shiny and i'm holding him down to earth the ones who be saying they're from another planet girl and they say they weird and all this other stuff you know i'm gonna see what you know is really going on before i pass judgment but i'm already looking at CeeLo like hmm Interesting. Because then you can say the human stuff, right? You you can't comply to this world. You can't comply to all the rules because you're not really human. You're not from here. You're from another planet. You're different. And it's like, nah, nigga. Like, you know, like, yeah. They've been engaged for five years. They've been together for almost eight years. And I am just kind of, like, really curious, like I said, to just see what their issues really are. Because why have you been engaged for five years? You know, mostly when people be engaged for a long amount of time, sometimes they just don't have the money for their wedding. You know what I mean? And it's like, but, like, y'all have millions. like, Or y'all just, y'all have thousands. Because I don't know CeeLo Pocket, so I'm just be safe and say CeeLo got thousands. I'm sure he got millions. But I'll say he got thousands. CeeLo got thousands, right? And we don't know what Shani do. She looks very conservative. She looks like she got stuff going for herself, you know? So it's just like money is obviously not the issue of why y'all didn't get married. So why haven't y'all got married yet? Like, I'm trying to see the issue issues like because even the previews it just you just hear CeeLo say shiny you're not as perfect as you think I think you are that's it's still like you know what I'm saying I don't know I'm trying to figure it out so CeeLo says their problems are communication past issues and power struggle and she seemed to agree with that so I, I'm assuming they're on the same page as far as what the problems are when he said past issues, I feel like it's something he did. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, men love to, like, minimize what they did. Like, you know, because if it was something she did, as she did, like, men would be specific. Like, oh, this is what it was. But for him to be like, 
past issues. It's like, okay, don't tell me you one of them dudes who think that because you said sorry about something, that just takes away all the hurt, lie, and deceit. Like, you know what I'm saying? All the betrayal, all the bull the I'm trying not to cuss, but all the effery. You know, like Silo <laughs> said they're not in trouble, they just have trouble spots. And if he got trouble then no, if he got a problem, then the problem got the problem. And Shane looked like See, he don't know how to talk. This is what I'm talking about. And I noticed that when he did it, he took a sip of his drink. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm really sad I didn't see low. Like, he giving me low-key, like, covert narcissistic vibes. You know, I'm not saying he's a narcissist, but I'm just saying he's giving me very covert narcissistic vibes. Do your shit very subtly. Blame it on Buddha and shit and call it a good day. Like... I'm watching you. You. Well, so, um, before the awards were played, they played the video clips, I guess, of an interview they did previous before the show started. And one thing that struck me was when CeeLo said, I'll say anything in an argument. And it's just like, it's just, I'm telling you, like, he just comes off all type of asshole -ish to me. Like, he really do. He really comes off all types of, like, asshole -ish. Because if you're the type of person that say anything in an argument, maybe that's some of the past issues that you're saying is, oh, just a little bit of part of the problem. Like, because there's only certain stuff you say you cannot take back. You feel me? And you as a grown man who use your words to make money, you know what's hurtful, bro. Like... I can't, I can't, I cannot with the Black Buddha. I cannot, I really, really, really cannot. He said Ceylon don't listen to her. He said he don't wish to be controlled. He said he might feel like she's fringing on his free spirit. And he said he wished that they can find a common grounds on communicating. Now I just want to take a second to say, that's why I said, when he said that he was from another planet, like, you about to be using this shit as an excuse. Oh, I'm a free spirit. I can't do this and that. Like, listen, these niggas who be acting so different, don't be that goddamn different. Like, that's what I, that's the real tea. That's the real tea. That's really what I've learned. Like, these motherfuckers who act like they're so different, they can't go by the rules of society. Like, no. Them niggas don't be no different. They be fuckboys. Like, he just happened to be a fuckboy who look like a black Buddha and got a lot of money. Said she thought her relationship with CeeLo was her purpose. And CeeLo said, I know she loved me, but I don't want to be nobody different. I, here's my thing. Like, it come back down to them being engaged for five years. What are y'all waiting on? Like, not saying to get married, but obviously if it's not happening and there's some problem, like, what do you think that time is going to fix the problem? Like, I'm just confused. Like... I see a lot of red flags in just this interview, so I'm, like, I'm, I'm saying I'm sure there is a valid reason why he hasn't married her and she hasn't married him. More so, I feel like he wants her to accept him 120%, and I feel like that means the disrespectful things and the things that she don't like, that she, that she feels some type of way as a person and maybe even as a woman like when it comes to communication that's not a man or a woman thing that's just a human being thing you know what i mean so it's like <laughs> i don't know bro CeeLo. she said that her and CeeLo are not hearing each other and CeeLo says something he always say is you can leave if you want to listen one part to have me cracking up was when he said that jocelyn said "Ooh." Boy, bye. Like, bruh, you, <laughs> you doing too much now. You doing too much to look like CeeLo. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, you doing too much to look like a CeeLo. Like, I don't have time. Like, you are doing way too much. Like, who do you think you are? Like, I know I'm joking saying this nigga look like a black Buddha, but nigga, you not really Buddha, bruh. Like, ill communicated award goes to. CeeLo and Shawnee. I really like what Dr. Ish said. Like, Dr. Ish said, listen, she's still trying to get into y'all world and y'all been in together for a long time. She wants some certainty. She want to know when she lay her head down at night, she going to wake up to the next person. And CeeLo's like, oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. And when he thinks that she's being controlling, that's really her just trying to take care of him. And if he does not receive that that way, then he needs to communicate with her in the way which you will receive it. 
beautifully said, Dr. Ish. Judge Lynn Toller said, I want to take the you could leave out of the conversation. When I tell you everybody was clapping, everybody was clapping. And that's just one of those things where it's just like, that's so aggravating. When you have a person act like they don't know what they say is jacked up. Oh, I never knew that me saying that was so... How is it that a whole audience agree on something? Like, how is the whole audience clapping? Like, that's out of pocket. Like, motherfuckers is having outbursts saying, boy, bye. And you have no idea. You're just so oblivious to it. That's fake, bruh. That's fake. He know what he's saying. He know what he's doing. That's why he said, when we're in an argument, I say whatever you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm waiting for him to say I hit below the belt. Like, I know he do, because if you say whatever, you're hitting below the belt, period. So, CeeLo and Shani get to their room, and it's like half the room is zen, half the room looks like low-key in office. And, um, <laughs> she was like, oh my god, wow, this kind of looks like our house. And then she seen that damn board, and it was like, 8 a.m., remind CeeLo to wake up, 9 a.m., remind CeeLo to breathe. <laughs> And she goes to that boy, she's like, uh-uh, who did this? This is so petty. This is so petty. And it was just so funny because she comes off so conservative. So for her to be like, uh-uh, this is so petty. Who did this? Like, it was just so cute. Like, I like Shawnee. I like Shawnee a lot. Like, I can't wait to hear more about their story. I really do actually really like the cast.